Before we get into the latest free agency rumors for the Bengals, how confident are you in what the Bengals you think they'll do in free agency? Feeling good? Not so good. Scale it for me from 1 to 10 in the comments section. Let's begin with some safety rumors on Justin Simmons. Cincy Jungle exploring the ideas of the Bengals adding the now-cut Bronco safety, who, by the way, would not impact the comp pick formula. And I am very intrigued by this idea. Simmons offers something the Bengals don't have in the secondary, which is a good veteran, because I'm not counting Nick Scott as good, by the way. He is not the same player he was in his prime. I think you can kind of... See that in the tackles per game number, in the almost raw interception numbers as well. But he can do deep safety stuff, can do split safety stuff. And I just wonder if the Bengals are cooking up something surprising in the safety position. Because they clearly missed not just Jesse Bates, but, but Vaughn Bell as well last year. And the safeties under contract right now were Daxton Hill, more on him in a second. Jordan Battle, who I like as a young piece long term and even short term. I don't, you guys, we all feel the same way about Nick Scott. I, mean, I think we all feel very similar there. Tyson Anderson is a depth piece. He's not a real starter. Uh, I know that Louie Anarumo does not like u- utilizing three safety looks if he can avoid it, but adding a veteran at a position where you just cannot have the, the mental lapses and the breakdowns and the errors that you had last season because it was a massive issue for the defense overall does sound important to me. I think Justin Simmons in what is a very deep safety class overall stands out. Now, it does raise questions. What are you going to do with Daxton Hill? Does he just become safety two and they'll do some mix and matching high and low stuff there? Do you? Because deep down I wonder, is his best spot nickel corner? Is that really where he's going to be at his best? I I, I wouldn't rule that out necessarily either. Uh, I saw flashes from Daxton Hill. I saw some bad flashes as well. But I think with this being... Such a strong safety class overall. With the starting caliber depth that goes 10 to 15 safeties deep, I think it makes some sense for the Bengals to explore it. So I would not be surprised if they did something. You know, maybe it's not Justin Simmons. Maybe it is. They have the funds to go get him if they want to. He'll be less expensive than someone like a Xavier McKinney would be. So what would you guys do if you ran the Bengals? Would you sign Justin Simmons? Y for yes, N for no in the comments section. Let's revisit the latest now on one DJ Reader. The latest buzz is that maybe Reader's market is bigger than previously thought despite the torn quad. Here's what Dan Graziano of ESPN reported early this morning. After Chris Jones ended a big deal on Saturday night, Miami's Christian Wilkins is likely to be a hot name with contending teams such as the Texans and Lions looking to upgrade at that position. Other defensive tackles people around the league believe could land nice deals include the Colts' Grover Stewart, Leonard Williams of the Seahawks, and Bengals' run stuffer DJ Reader. Jones' five-year deal and the four-year $98 million deal the Ravens gave Justin Matabike on Friday night are only going to help the defensive tackles at the top of the market get paid. I am very curious what things look like for DJ Reader, because I kind of wondered, I think I might have said this on this show or said it on one of the other ones we do here at Chat Sports. Because of the quad injury and because of the fact that he can't pass a physical right now, there's no way, he's he's not there yet, that Reader might have to wait a little bit. Because you're you're not going to get like a three-year mega guaranteed deal, you know, with whatever, 50% of a guaranteed or whatever, if you can't pass a physical, right? Now, you can work around that, but I'd wondered if maybe Reader waits a little bit longer to sign. Or maybe the Bengals bring him back because they, of course, have the most comfort with where he's at. Um, then again, we also saw Jimmy Garoppolo have a weird thing last year where he was signed, the physical came back bad, they almost canceled the entire press conference, the whole deal, and restructured it. So weird things happened in free agency. And there's almost always one player who agrees to a deal on Monday and then by Wednesday goes, I changed my mind. I mean, maybe once every other year. But defensive tackle is a need, with or without DJ Reader. You lose Reader, I think you've got zero starting caliber run-stopping defensive tackles and one starting caliber guy, Not and that, that name is BJ Hill. It's a very thin group. So name a free agent who you want to sign. Sound off for me. 
in the comments right now. Another interesting name that is now being bandied about is Christian Fulton. Both Sports Illustrated and The Athletic has predicted Christian Fulton to the Bengals in free agency. They have The Athletic as part of their kind of 53-man roster projection. More on that in a little bit. Uh, but also Sports Illustrated. Here's what they wrote on Christian Fulton signing. The Bengals could be forced to search for bargain players to use the franchise tag on T. Higgins and work out a massive deal with Jamar Chase. Not fully true, but whatever. Fulton might have a quiet market after a terrible contract season, but he's only 25 and has had many impressive performances during four seasons in Tennessee. Terrible's about right. He was bad. Uh, Christian Fulton, in his second season in Tennessee, I thought was playing incredible football. I'm like, this guy is going to be a, a, a Pro Bowl caliber corner. I liked him coming out of LSU despite the not-so-great arm length, and he's gotten worse each of the past two years. Maybe it was coaching. Maybe it was mental. Men mental makeup's key for cornerbacks, by the way. But if you sign Christian Fulton to what will probably be a one-year deal with little to no guaranteed money, I don't see too many problems with that. I think you can make that work. I assume you're going to lose Chidabay Awuzie, so Cam Tither Britt becomes CB1, DJ Turner becomes CB2, Hilton is staying at your nickel. Yeah, maybe, maybe Mike Hilton joins him there. Uh, yeah, DJ Ivy, I don't know if I want Ivy as my number three outside corner quite yet. I don't think that's a great idea for Cincinnati. So I do think adding a kind of stopgap veteran, buy low candidate like Christian Fulton does make quite a bit of sense. Folks, we have 6,969 subscribers here on Bengals Breakdown. Everybody spam nice for me in the comments. And also make sure you are subscribed. I want us to get to 7,000 subs. The goal was before the start of free agency, we're so close. It starts in less than 24 hours. So you got to sub, tell your friends about it. And if we have to cheat and say it was the real start of free agency, so be it. Finally, really interesting running back room conversation piece here from the Athletic, again, part of that uh, Paul Daner's 53-man roster projection. He had some massive changes predicted here. This is where things currently sit as of today, as of filming, in the backfield for Cincinnati. Joe Mixon, for now, maybe, under contract. Chase Brown is not going to go anywhere. Trey Gillums is a free agent. Chris Evans is by no mean guaranteed a roster spot either. So what the Athletic predicted was they cut Joe Mixon, would not come as, as a surprise at all at this point. They sign Zach Moss to be the lead back. They retain Chase Brown, who is on the roster. They also sign Clyde edwards alaire which is just perfect to be the Bayou Bengals. I think actually does make a lot of sense as a third down scat back type, and you can rotate all three guys fairly heavily. I think Clyde the Glide would be very impactful on, on, in the screen game, plus Chase Brown can do that too. Makes sense. The Bengals finally figured that out a little bit last year. And he also has them drafting Isaac Girondo uh, out of Louisville, who is a fantastic athlete. I think it's very intriguing. How would you grade that running back room if you were, if it did go down, I should say? A, B, C, D, or F in the comments. I'm going to give that at least a B. Um, you know, Zach Moss, I think, makes a ton of sense to replace Joe Mixon, offers a little bit more explosive plays, I don't think would be that expensive, and I think you're talking maybe up to $5 million maximum. Chase Brown gets to stay as kind of RB2, back up to the main role, the third down role. Clyde Edwards-Alaire would probably be close to the vet minimum. So what the Bengals just did is release, in, in theory, emphasis on the theory aspect, sure. You replace Joe Mixon, you cut him, you add Zach Moss and Clyde Edwards-Alaire at basically the same cost and maybe even a little bit cheaper, potentially, uh, in Cincinnati. And you got two players. Your running back room is in really good shape. If you fall in love with somebody, you can take them. You can ride with those three throughout the season. I, I, I like that move. Be on the low end for me. I think that, that'd be a very... If we sat down, you know, minus the draft part, two weeks from now, and we're like, Zach Mixon got cut. It's Zach Moss, Chase Brown, Edwards Alaire. I'm like, great. I'm taking running back off my draft needs list, unless they're all one-year deals, which case maybe you still have an eye for the future there. But I think that would be a shrewd uh, planning and process by the Bengals at the running back spot. Thank you.